thankful for the family that we are provided here at this I'm thankful church. for all the good things in the world. I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful that I was able to find a new home in um, St. Stephen's Church for my kids and myself. I'm thankful for all the friends that we have at this church and all the youth programs that get to happen. I'm thankful for donuts. <laughs> Starting with gratitude is always good. Donuts, we may or may not have them over there, but we've definitely got bacon and baked goods. 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. Sunday morning. This bake sale is for our youth group and all the events that we do. Welcome to our sister churches for joining us this weekend. We're so grateful to have you on campus. I am Miss Rachel, your director for Youth and Children's Ministries, and next weekend is Fall Fest. Fall Fest has a trunk or treat, a spooky forest, pumpkin painting, beer garden, and some grilling going on at the pavilion. Please speak to Russ Hawk if you're willing to help with the beer garden or the grilling. And if you would like to host a trunk, we could use a few more. Check your Friday email. There is a sign up or come talk to me. Please, please, please. And thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, Sunday Seeds does continue between services over in the schoolroom. And that is available for our elementary students, high school students. You are highly encouraged to come and help out. We thank you for that. And confirmation continues between services as well. Remember, friends, God loves you. And so do we. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. So happy that you are here today on this beautiful day. The Parish News outlines many of the things that Miss Rachel just spoke about in the video. Uh, it also has a lot of things that are coming up, and it can, includes also the connection card, and the connection card is your ticket to anything you need from me or from the church office, or if you have a prayer concern that you want added to the prayer list, or if you're visiting with us and would like further information or contact from me or from St. Stephen, please fill out that connection card and place it in the offering plate later on in our service today. Following our service today, you are invited to join us for the book launch luncheon. Even if you have not signed up, I'm sure we'll find space for you. We have a light lunch, and then I'm going to talk about the book, and uh, I'll give out free copies of the book. Thank you to uh, one of our members of the church, and I'll talk about that later on, and I am looking forward to that, so I hope to see you there. Next weekend is going to continue a lot of uh, the special things that are going on. We have next Sunday the Fall Fest and the Trunk or Treat that starts around 4 o'clock next Sunday. And then during our services next weekend, we have the Ministry of Palms Deaf Church with us. Remember, they were our special mission project during our 50th anniversary year. And they will be with us at all of our services next weekend doing sign language for the hearing impaired. And I hope that is the start of something more, that we can serve that community. And they'll also be giving us an update on their ministry. So I'm looking forward to that. And there's a video of some signs that you can learn uh, to help make them feel more welcome next weekend. And then two weeks from today is the weekend of All Saints, where we remember the names of those who have gone before us. It is not too late. If you want a name remembered on that weekend, please get it into the church office as soon as possible. Coming up later in November on Sunday the 17th, immediately following this service, will be our congregational meeting and luncheon, and that is our finance and budget meeting. We'll be presenting the budget and the finances for 2025. I'll give an update on the property in the back and so much more uh, that we want you to be a part of. We want your voice represented. We want you to hear what's going on as we uh, do all of these things. Don't forget Wednesdays offer that midweek opportunity to get some time in God's presence and in God's word. Uh, we have the 10 o'clock chapel service with the little ones from Stepping Stones. Later on, we have children's worship arts. We have the Bible study, the Gospel of St. Luke at 6 o'clock in the parish hall. We're going to continue chapter 1 this week. And then at 7 o'clock every Wednesday, we have our evening prayer service. 
All right, hurricane assistance, a lot going on with that, as you know, a lot of different ways to support. Uh, I want to thank all of you who came out this week uh, to help distribute supplies that were brought here by Seminole County. Uh, it was great to see so many people volunteer to help out, and many people took advantage of it. Now, what happened when it was over? We had a lot left over, as you can see from the, uh, the slide above my head. Well, we were blessed to have Seminole Harley uh, arrange for a trailer to take these supplies up to North Carolina. So yesterday morning, the pallets of stuff, water, uh, meals that are ready to eat, and tarps were loaded, loaded on this trailer. Uh, other items from other places are going to be placed in that trailer, and later on this week that will go up. So I was so thankful that we had a place for that uh, because Seminole County said, we were just going to donate the supplies to you, which said to me they wanted us to store, store, store the supplies. They weren't going to take them back, and we didn't have space for all that stuff. So this is wonderful that we can really pass it on uh, to those who need it. And so thank you, Seminole uh, Harley, for your help with that. And thank you to all of you for your continued work and help with all these things. Speaking of those pallets, the pallets we did use ended up with wooden pallets left over. Some of you might be those who do projects with pallets. If you would like, they are stacked behind the dumpsters, behind the kitchen. Uh, please take them. If you don't take them, I have to squeeze them into the dumpster later on this week. So uh, grab them if that's something you want. All right, it is the 22nd Sunday after the Pentecost. In our gospel lesson today, James and John have a special request for Jesus. And speaking of special things, we are blessed this, eve, uh, this morning uh, with music not only from our sanctuary choir, but from the children's choir as they have a piece that they'll be singing together. So let us uh, take a moment of silent prayer, and then we're going to rise and join together in our opening song, Come to the Water. Please stand as you are able. Let's sing together. Oh, come, come to the
of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty and eternal God, you see things from an eternal perspective. And we see things from a limited human perspective. You are omniscient, knowing all. We are but mortal. In many and various ways, you spoke to your people in the past, using the prophets as your mouthpieces. Your people often disobeyed. Today, in these last times, you have spoken to us through your Son. Forgive us for rebelling against you, Lord. For the sins of thought, word, and action, forgive us, wash us clean in the holy baptism and the blood of the cross. Upon this your confession, I bring good news from the King of Kings himself. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, I declare the forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Sovereign God, you turn your greatness into goodness for all the peoples on earth. Shape us into willing servants of your kingdom and make us desire always and only your will through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you. 
A reading from Isaiah, chapter 53. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases. Yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our inequities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice, 
he was taken away. Who could have, have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich, although he had not done no violence, and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him, the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish, he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will allot him a portion with the great, and shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and made, made, and made intercession for the transgressors. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be you. to God. Because you have made the Lord your refuge, the most high your dwelling place, For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not catch your foot against You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. When they call to me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. The second reading is from Hebrews chapter 5. Every high priest chosen from among mortals is put in charge of things pertaining to God on their behalf to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with the ignorant and the wayward, since he himself is subject to weakness. And because of this, he must offer sacrifice for his own sins as well as for those of the people. And one does not presume to take this honor, but takes it only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, you are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered and having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are able. Gospel according to St. Mark, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. 
James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, We are able. Then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink you will drink, and with the baptism with which I am baptized you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lorded over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated as I invite forward our children. Good morning. Good morning. Let me say before I begin how special it was to have you guys singing today. I really feel blessed. Yeah. And I am so thankful that you are all here, and I can't wait till you do it again, right? So let's do it again soon. Sound good? All right. So this is what I've been waiting for all night. My team <laughs> is better than your team. Yeah, I heard the home run around uh, 1130 last night and woke up and saw the Yankees win. They're going to the World Series. They have 27 world championships already, and they're going to add another one in about two weeks, right? Let me hear an amen. amen. Uh, <laughs> my team, the Yankees, is better than your team. That's not so good to hear, is it? Doesn't make you feel good inside, does it? When you hear something or someone or some team is better than you, right? But we live in a world where we're constantly measuring each other by what we do and what we achieve, right? So um, you go to school, you have to get really good grades, right? So you can go to college and be really smart and get a really good job and make a lot of money and have more money than everyone else, right? Or maybe you're, you're on a team or you're an athlete and you have to practice, 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 workouts, run, do all these things. Why? So you can be the best, better than everyone else, right? And do you hear this all the time? You see it on TV, you see it on social media. People are constantly telling us how great they are. That's what James and John asked of Jesus in our gospel lesson today. They went to Jesus and they said, help others see how great we are. Tell everyone that we're the best. And Jesus um, didn't go along with their request, did he? He didn't really like that, surprisingly, right? And he had a lesson for all of us. The kingdom of heaven does not work the way the world works. Even though we're made to feel small and, and not so good by a world that's constantly competing, Jesus says, if you really want to be great, you're not better, stronger, or more powerful than anyone else. He said, the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and give his life for many. Greatness in God's eyes is not when we show people how good and great we are, Greatness is when we serve others, when we care for others, when we love others, when we don't go around telling everyone, I'm better than you are, or my team is better than you. And that's 
what the church is all about. That we see God's greatness and not our own. Amen? Amen. Will you pray with me? Fold your hands, close your eyes, bow your heads, repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for serving and loving me just as I am. Bless me and fill my heart that I don't want to be great and more powerful, but that I want to love and serve. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you very much. I tell a story in my book, shameless plug time, I tell a story in my book about my senior year at high school at Long Island Lutheran High School. It was the last few weeks of our senior year before graduation, and every year at the end of the school year, we would have a special awards chapel. So we got together and we gave thanks to God for all of the blessings that God bestowed upon us during the school year, athletically and academically. And then awards were handed out. And the highest award given every year at Lutheran High School was called the Prodeo et Scola Award from the Latin meaning for God and school. Given to the male and female student who did the most to exemplify the mission of the, the school, to serve God and serve one another. And the talk in the senior hallway leading up to that, that awards chapel was that the award was going to come down to me and the captain of the football team, Tom. And I have to admit, I sorely wanted that award. I felt I deserved that award for all the time that I spent leading chapel and doing all sorts of social ministry stuff, as opposed to Tom, who got in the newspaper all the time for his athletic ability and all that. So when Tom's name was read at that chapel, surely I was disappointed and hurt and wondering why. But it was an important lesson that I needed to learn. It was an important reminder to us that serving God and the kingdom of heaven is not about honors and accolades and thank yous and all those things, but it's about service and sacrifice and love. And that was a lesson that I needed as I went on to give my life to the Lord in ministry. Fortunately for me, as we hear in our gospel lesson today, I was in good company having the wrong motivations when it came to serving the Lord. James and John, arguably two of the most influential and important of all 12 apostles, came to Jesus wanting to be recognized for exactly that. And for those who lived in the first century around Jesus, that picture that John was something that was very familiar to them, and they understood what it was. For kings, when they held court back in that day, always had to their right and to their left the most important and second most powerful people in the kingdom. So James and John were asking to be recognized as the second most powerful and important people when it came to the work of Jesus. So, of course, there was a firestorm among the remaining ten apostles when they got wind of this. And Jesus has to go and set it all straight. And this is a message that we hear in the church over and over again. That the church is about service. That giving our lives to God is not about honors and accolades, but it's about serving and loving one another. Yet we need to be reminded of this over and over again because it's something that the people of God mess up over and over again. As much as the church is built upon the foundation of grace and love, 
we often like ourselves and our efforts and what we do and what we give to be honored and recognized. And the history of the Christian church is filled with examples of this. And this is one of the reasons why there's so many divisions among Christians. Because at one time or another, certain parts of the body of Christ felt like James and John did. They were more right, they were more holy, they were more close to God's word than others were, thus creating divisions in the church. And we know that this attitude that James and John had that can sometimes permeate our lives can cause great trouble in the church. Sometimes there's a tendency among God's people to think that the church is Burger King. I know we share property right next door to Burger King, but we're two completely different things. But if you remember years ago, the mantra for Burger King was, have it your way. Right? And the commercialism that surrounds us in our world, where we get to choose what we want, how we want it, whatever car color it is, or wherever we want to live, is that sometimes that attitude leaks into our expectations of the church. I want to have it my way. I want things to go the way I believe they should go. I want to manipulate things so they're exactly the way I expect them to be, so that what I want, my needs, are served the best. And that's not how the kingdom of heaven works. God knows what we need, and God brings it to us. Then there are those times where maybe we only want to support the work and the ministry of God and the church when we get recognized for it. In one of my prior parishes, every time I would walk around the church, in whatever items that I would see in the church, whether they were big things like the organ or things like the chalice on the altar or little pictures that were hanging on the wall, there was a brass plaque with the name of the person who donated that item to the church. And the problem was is that as time went on and those items needed to be passed on or didn't really help with the work of the church anymore, those people, if they were still alive, who had their name on the plaques, felt like they had a right or a say in what would happen with that. As a matter of fact, we had some plaques for organs three organs ago. That organ wasn't even being used anymore, but the name was still there that they donated the organ. Or there were some times when we went to get rid of something and the person who donated it wanted it back because they gave it. And that's not what giving to the work of the Lord is about. We're not loaning things to the work of the Lord. We're not doing it so that we have a say in it. We're doing it unconditionally so that the work of Christ can go forth in the world. And then there can be those times where we bring that attitude that James and John had in the gospel lesson to church, where we start judging and measuring the faith of those around us to see if they measure up to us so that we feel that we're better than everyone else. It was that boldness, the fact that James and John had evaluated where they stood with the other 12 that gave them the courage to ask of Jesus, let us sit at your right and at your left. And there can be those times where like me in high school, we bargain with God. We feel because we've done so much, we give so much, we play so much, we sing so much, whatever it may be, that God should honor us, recognize us, and thank us in that special way. And when this holier than thou, I'm right, you're wrong, me first, you second attitude works its way into our faith lives, it can become very dangerous for the body of Christ because it can cause us to have an attitude that makes others around us not feel safe and feel welcome to the grace and the love of God. All of our readings for today can be beautifully summed up in the last words that Jesus spoke in our gospel lesson. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. If you think about Jesus, he certainly had the ability and the power to show how great he was. He could have called down like the apostles had said to him at some times, all the armies of angels to come and show his strength to conquer the entirety of the world. If anyone had a beautiful golden throne upon which they could sit, where they'd be surrounded with the most beautiful, influential, and powerful people in the world, it was Jesus. 
But Jesus showed his greatness when he hung on the bloody throne of the cross. And who were on his right and her left, his left? The thieves, right? And so we see in Christ, in this world where we are constantly seeking and desiring and looking for affirmation and accolades, we see what true service and love is all about. And this simple message is repeated over and over in the church because we know that it's not easy. But even though it's not easy in this competitive world in which we live, it is so vital and necessary. Because out of all the things that we do, all the honors we might aspire for in our lives, the things that we do to serve the kingdom of heaven and the gospel of Jesus Christ are the only things that last beyond this world. And because Jesus has rendered such service to us, sacrificial, undeserving, gracious service to us, we will be blessed to sit at his right and his left forever. Amen. Please stand as you are able. A hymn tune that comes from the 1500s. Christ is the hope of all the world.
Let us, raise, let us raise our voices together, confessing our faith with the church throughout history in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one in being with the Father. Through him all things remain. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was the part of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In our prayers this morning, we remember the family of Joe Howard, the grandfather of George and Joe Howard, who was called to his eternal home this past week. A funeral was held for Joe Howard on Friday morning. Comforted by God's word in Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and the whole creation. Holy One, we give, we give thanks for all servants, servant leaders of the church. Bless bishops, pastors, and deacons with humble wisdom and ground them in your love. God of grace. Your Creative One, we give thanks for the delicate balance of the natural world. Kindle in us a spirit of caring that all may thrive. God of grace. Your Empowering One, Fill the leaders of governments with a spirit of service. May equality and respect be achieved for all people. God of grace. Your Restoring one, send your angels to watch over, rescue, and protect those who are injured or ill. Nurse those who suffer hardship, disease, injury, or difficulty with your comfort and peace. God of grace. Abiding one, you call pastors to shepherd the congregation toward faithful living as servants and followers of Jesus. Inspire all ordained ministers and seminarians to ministry that challenges, engages, and comforts those in their care. God of grace. Saving one, we give thanks for all the saints who have faithfully served you. We rejoice in a promised place at the feast of victory that will receive that we receive by your grace alone. God of grace. Restoring one, we thank you for all the public and civil servants who have given of themselves to go above and beyond to help those who have been hurt and devastated by hurricanes, unforeseen circumstances, and other natural disasters. Raise up in all of us a spirit of care and comfort for those around us, God of grace. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in the saving grace you freely give, both now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we have the opportunity now to give back that which God has given to us as we receive the offerings.
please rise. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. So great was your love that you gave us your Son as our Redeemer. You sent him as one like ourselves, though free from sin, that you might see and love in us what you see and love in Christ. Your gifts of grace lost by disobedience are now restored by the obedience of your Son. We praise you, Lord, with all the angels and saints in their song of joy. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, full of your glory, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, for you looked upon us, the people that you created, yet rebelled against you. We were created to have a relationship with you, but sold out our relationship with you for one rebellious bite of the forbidden fruit. You would be righteous in condemning us for our rebellion against you. Instead, you used another tree in your son, Jesus Christ, to die in our place and rise again to forgive us, renew us, and strengthen us. As we come to receive his true body and blood, given and shed for us, we see your unconditional love and mercy for us. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and we drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ for God has loved us so much that he has given to us his son to be our savior. Therefore, as God's beloved children, we have the courage to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Take away the sin of the world. 
Please rise. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Lord of life, in the gift of your body and blood, you turn the crumbs of our faith into a feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. People of God, you are Christ's body, bringing new life to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood that was shed for all. sing together. I was a wretch. I remember who I was. I was lost. I was blind. I was running out of time. Sin separated. The breach was far too wide. But from the
Go in peace, the living word dwells in you. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.